When we talk about the darkest queen, who do we usually picture? In England, probably Queen Mary Tudor, who was nicknamed Bloody. However, in Middle Ages France, there was a much darker and more ruthless woman who did not shy away from using men to gain power. Her name was Isabella of Bavaria. Isabella was probably born in Munich in 1370. The exact date and place of birth remain unknown to us. She was the daughter of Stephen III, Duke of Bavaria. Isabella was about 15 years old when she was asked not by a petty German prince, but by the King of France himself. The Duke of Bavaria was happy, but he realized that his daughter was not modest. That's why he refused a delicate medical examination of his daughter's innocence. He thought that otherwise Isabella would not be crowned King of France. The Duke of Bavaria's family was poor. They could not provide Isabella with a lavish dowry and fancy clothes. But the groom liked Isabella. Charles VI was delighted with his young bride, who was also his cousin. Isabella was a stately and beautiful girl. She was fit to be queen. But the king himself did not do well with his royal duties. He spent his days entertaining and embracing the ladies of the court. Not surprisingly, Charles VI's uncles took on some of the responsibilities of running the country. They wanted to remove the obnoxious nephew from the throne. After all, such a king would satisfy his own whims rather than the needs of his country and his subjects. While the king went to the battlefield, Isabella herself was learning the art of intrigue and politics. One of her first favorites, Bois Borden, proved to be a good teacher and brought his ward into the course of palace affairs. Isabella had a goal. She eliminated the king's regents. Bois Borden was surprised. The German simpleton turned out to be a real master of state affairs. Soon, Isabella fell in love with the king's brother, Louis, Duke of Touraine. The queen told Louis that the kingdom would be better off without regents, the king's uncles. Isabella of Bavaria did not forget to organize her court of love, where the main rule was not to hide their feelings. The real fun began when the king left, and soon Charles VI was called mad. People were no longer afraid of his wrath. Isabella deposed the king's regents. She ensured that power passed entirely to the king through her lucrative acquaintances and love affairs. Since the king was unwell, Isabella concentrated power in the kingdom in her own hands. She was going to declare Charles VI mentally incompetent and appoint a new regent of France. Isabella thought that her subjects would be more willing to see a man as regent, so she tried to exalt Louis, the king's brother and her lover. But she was wrong. Power fell back to Charles' uncles. So Isabella decided on a desperate act. She wanted to kill the king. By then, Charles VI had gone completely mad. He didn't recognize his wife and was very violent. One day, the king decided to organize a celebration at court. Some of the servants dressed in outfits smeared with tar. But during the festivities, a fire suddenly broke out. It's not known whether the fire was intentional or accidental. Carl was frightened. Several people were burned alive before his eyes. The king's mind became even more disturbed. Isabella left her husband, settling in the residence in Paris with the king's brother. The queen asked Charles for the title of Duke of Orleans for her lover. Isabella henceforth made no secret of her affair with Louis of Orleans. The subjects were outraged. The queen was accused of immorality. Those who asked for the queen's name were quickly killed. Louis of Orleans was reckless. He began to spend time in the company of other ladies. Isabella was unpleasantly surprised. She decided to take revenge on her foolish lover by conspiring with John, Duke of Burgundy, who did not like the Duke of Orleans. Isabella and John devised an insidious plot. One day, Louis of Orleans was summoned to the king's house. Louis was at Isabella's house at the time. He quickly packed up and headed for Charles Castle. On the way, the Duke of Orleans was attacked by John's men. Louis was killed, and John was immediately under suspicion. A feud began between the houses of Orleans and Burgundy. Isabella decided that she should fall in love with the son of Louis of Orleans in order to elicit from him further plans in the battle for power. However, the son proved to be smarter than his father. Despite a fleeting affair with Isabella of Bavaria, Louis' son did not tell her about his future plans. Isabella simply had no moral principles. She was willing to do anything for power and her own gain. 
The only sane person in this political intrigue was the Dauphin Charles, son of Isabella of Bavaria and Charles VI. The Dauphin Charles ordered his loyal servants to kidnap his mother so that she would no longer disgrace the royal family with her antics. Isabella was upset that she had no clothes or jewelry while imprisoned. The queen decided to call John of Burgundy, her favorite, to her aid again. She sent him her golden seal. The Duke of Burgundy was able to free Isabella from captivity, but Isabella, angry at her husband and son, openly confronted them. Isabella of Bavaria sent word to the English monarch Henry V offering to marry her daughter Catherine. Thus, the King of England could claim the French crown through marriage to a French princess. Isabella acted despicably both as a mother and as a queen. After all, there was a hundred years war going on between France and England at that time. Henry V married Princess Catherine, and the Dauphin Charles lost the opportunity to take the French throne. To make it more painful for her husband and son, Isabella of Bavaria declared that Charles was not the son of the King of France. As a result, the Dauphin really began to question his lineage. Isabella even tried to kill her son, again tainting the hands of John of Burgundy. But Charles' supporters were able to stop John. He passed away. According to one legend, Isabella of Bavaria did not spare her own daughter Michelle of Valois, who loved her brother Charles with all her soul. The queen simply poisoned her own child. Thanks to Joan of Arc, Charles was able to take the French throne, and Isabella fled to Paris. There was no trace of her former beauty. A miserable and fat queen lived out her life in poverty, looking for money for food. Only a priest and a single servant escorted her to her final resting place. The others didn't care about her. Charles VII was wise not to execute his mother. He showed his magnanimity, but gave his mother a more serious punishment, total indifference to her and her life. 